Okay, now we're going to talk about blood vessels. The blood vessels of your body are divided into three types. We have the arteries, the veins and the capillaries. Shown here is a picture summarizing the structure of all three. We're going to start with the functions of each first. We're going to talk about the artery function. The arteries function are to carry blood away from the heart and that I shall remember this, this way. Arteries carry blood away from the heart, A, away. The opposite would be the veins. The veins carry blood back to the heart, V, back. The capillaries, what are they for? The capillaries are very small blood vessels compared to the arteries and the veins. Capillaries are formed when the arteries split up into smaller vessels. So that's how it goes. First the arteries, then the capillaries, and the capillaries will join back to form the veins. Okay. The capillaries function is to connect the arteries to the veins. This is important, we'll see why in a moment. Regarding their structure, the arteries are much bigger than the capillaries. The veins are also much bigger than the capillaries. Now you can't see them from this picture in terms of scale, so I'm going to illustrate. If the arteries and the veins were this size, Then how big is a capillary? A capillary would typically be around this size. Capillaries are really, really small. Okay? Okay. Now, the arteries, why are they so big? The arteries have a very thick layer of muscles and elastic fiber. The reason for this is that they need to deliver blood from the heart to other parts of the body or to the lungs. Since the heart contracts very powerfully, it will have a, generated a lot of pressure. The blood pressure in the arteries is very, very high. The muscles and elastic fibers are there to prevent the arteries from bursting and also to maintain the high blood pressure as it passes through the artery. Think about the muscles as contracting to prevent the bursting of the arterial wall. The elastic fibers are there for a recoil. If the blood is at high pressure and it pumps through the arteries at high pressure, the artery might become bigger and if it's too weak, the artery may burst. But if the arteries are elastic, every time the blood pulses through the artery, these arteries are able to recoil and push back on the blood. So when it recoils, it will prevent the bursting, at the same time, it will maintain the high pressure so that the blood can continue traveling at high speeds. How about the veins? The veins have a very thin layer of muscles and elastic fibers. In contrast, they are not meant for withstanding high pressure. Why? Now, veins are already at the end of the journey. The high blood pressure in the arteries will have dissipated. Now, if I were to illustrate the pressure this way, the arteries have the highest pressure, the veins will receive blood with the lowest pressure. Since there's such a low pressure, there is no danger of the veins bursting easily. Therefore, there is no need for a very thick layer of muscle or lots of elastic fibers. However, if the blood is traveling at low pressure, it would mean that the blood moves very slowly also. And then there is the danger of backflow. So this is where valves come in. Veins have valves. Only veins have valves. Arteries and capillaries do not have valves. What's the purpose of a valve? Same as in the heart, the valve is to prevent backflow. Preventing the backflow of blood ensures that blood can continue moving forwards in a single direction. In this case, the blood is able to move back toward the heart. Okay. Alright, next. 
Okay, now we're going to take a closer look at capillaries. The capillary is very small. To recap, capillaries are really, really small compared to arteries and veins. The reason why capillaries are so important and special is that this is where the exchange of nutrients and waste products between blood and your body cells occurs. Capillaries have a one cell thick wall. This here is a single cell. We call it the capillary wall. They have a name. They are also known as endothelial cells, but that is not very important for you. What's important for you to know is that since the wall is so thin, a single layer of cells is all it is, the diffusion of substances can occur relatively easily in and out of the capillary. In addition to that, there are gaps between the cell wall, and this allows for tissue fluid to pass through easily. So what's tissue fluid? Tissue fluid is the fluid that bathes all the cells of the body. The inside of your body is not dry. It's kind of wet. Every single cell in your body is constantly surrounded by a substance known as tissue fluid. So what is tissue fluid made of? Mostly water and also it contains most of the same contents of what blood plasma does. Okay, and here we can see the red blood cell in the middle. The red blood cell is going to take up the entire diameter of the capillary. Basically, the capillary is only big enough to allow one red blood cell to pass through at a time. So the red blood cells will be all lined up passing through your capillaries. For example, if this were a capillary, then this would be a string of red blood cells passing through. It's kind of crowded in there. So the red blood cells will all line up and move in a row. This is to ensure that the blood flows relatively slowly in your capillaries, giving a lot of time for the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide to occur. Okay, now okay, we're going to talk about a comparison of the arteries and veins. This is a summary. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Veins carry blood from the rest of the body back to the heart. The arteries allow blood to move at very high pressure, very fast, high speed, high pressure. The walls are thick, elastic and muscular. Whereas the veins, the blood flows in them very slowly and very smoothly at low pressure. The walls of the veins are very thin. They are not as elastic. They do not have very muscular walls. The veins alone have valves. This is because in the veins, there is a danger of the backflow of blood. The valves prevents the backflow of blood. The arteries have no valves because blood flow is very fast and it's very unlikely that blood flows backward in the arteries. Now, lastly, there's a very important thing I need to clarify here and here. Arteries in general carry oxygenated blood. The only artery that does not carry oxygenated blood is the pulmonary artery. If you can recall, the pulmonary artery delivers the oxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. Here's the right side of the heart. Here is the left side of the heart. The right side has oxygenate, deoxygenated blood. The right side delivers deoxygenated blood to the lungs. This is the pulmonary artery. 
The veins are in general carrying deoxygenated blood. There is only one exception to this. The pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein alone carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left side of the heart. Okay? In this diagram over here, we can see how the arteries and the veins are connected. Now this picture is just a very simple rough diagram, it doesn't show much. It's meant to show how an artery branches off. So this is your artery here, it branches and branches and then all these branch even more. At this point over here, these are called capillaries. These are the ones with the very small lumen size, very thin, one cell thick walls. Not shown in this picture are some other cells. How this would normally look like in the actual body is there would be a lot of body cells out here. So it doesn't matter what organ this is, there would be a lot of cells all around the capillaries and the oxygen, carbon dioxide, waste materials and nutrients will be exchanged between the capillaries and the body cells. So in a way, you can think of capillaries as little lanes that deliver or supply nutrients to the cells. Whereas the arteries or the veins over here can be thought of as the highways of your circulatory system. Okay, that's it. Thank you.